<laughs> oh, you guys, today we are on the 2021 Indian Springfield Dark Horse. Uh, if you're wondering why these handlebars look so high, it's because they are. Indian Springfield Dark Horse comes typically with a 12 inch uh, hanger handlebar. This here is a 16. And this is the highest my arms have ever been up on a motorcycle. And uh, what we're gonna just find out here, how well we do. Uh, it w I, I'm not gonna lie, it was a little bit of a struggle, moving, just moving the, the bike out of its spot, slow speed. But this is all a learning curve, right? Uh, we're just learning here. We're gonna get comfortable with this bike. Uh, it's got 116 cubic inch uh, V-twin. Woo! Uh, motor on it. Nice vibration in, in the hands here, even though you're 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 <laughs> you got a lot of space between your your hands and the engine. But still, uh, still get that in, engine vibration. It's nice though. It's not overwhelming. It's basically your typical, you know, your big big twin cruiser engine, big V twin. Not to be mistaken with the big twin and the Harley Davidson. Uh, this is the 116 cubic inch V twin uh, Thunderstroke uh, engine by Indian. And uh, right off the bat, I can just tell you what a comfortable ride this is. Uh, I, I, I've yet to be determined because we're just getting started how comfortable it's going to be having my hands up here. Um, but I know a lot of people saying that having your hands up above your heart, but not too high up above your heart keeps your hands from really getting fatigued. I don't know about that. To me, it seems like the higher your hands are going to be, you know, the, the more uh, you're going to lose some feeling in your hands because the blood is going to be coming back towards your heart. But we'll see. We'll see how we do here. This is a nice unguided route. So we're really going to try and test the limits of what we can do within uh, within reason. But man, this is a this is a nice motorcycle. They got the stage one kit here with the exhaust uh, on on this on this model of uh, the Springfield Dark Horse, and uh, and the highway lights here that you see. I don't know if you can tell here up front uh, the, the larger highway uh, additional headlights up front. And for a big bike, and I'll put the specs here for the weight. This bike handles very well. You know I. When you, would, when you ride a bike that's this big and this wide, I think the, the impression is that it's gonna be clunky and cumbersome. But, you know, getting into these turns here at, uh, you know, I'm going 70 miles an hour, uh, this this is just nice. It's nice, uh, uh, it's not nimble by any means, but it, it, it handles very well. It's very, very well balanced. Uh, you've got the footboards here as opposed to pegs. So, I mean, other than the fact that my arms are up here, this this is about as comfortable as a ride as you can get. Now I know you can slap a a, a windshield on a on a motorcycle like this. Uh, I don't know that I've seen a lot of people with, with uh, that have the handlebars up high like this with windshields. Uh, I will say I'm wearing a, a mesh jacket, so the wind passes through nice and easy. Uh, I know that the worry is when you've got your arms up like this that you're going to turn into a parachute, right? You've got if you're wearing a leather jacket that doesn't have a lot of ventilation, um, that the wind's just going to catch you. But as far as uh, as uh, as turning into a parachute and letting the wind affect the way that I have to ride here, it's it's not at all. Uh, we're getting some side wind here, some crosswind. We're running into the wind, and none of it seems to have any effect on uh, on the ride. And you know, we're, we're riding a heavy bike here, 700 easily plus pound bike, so. Uh, it's not gonna whip your bike around by any means. All right, so I can't see anything out of these mirrors. Somebody taller definitely was riding his bike. But again, this is something, I guess a positive to come out of a bike this size is that uh, your shoulders are never gonna get in the way of your mirrors. I know a lot of people will mount these mirrors upside down. Uh, so there is that. I got nothing to complain about this bike. The stock saddle here seems to be nice, nice and soft but also firm, so you're not gonna have to worry about uh, about hitting the bottom of this, this seat pan and, and getting uncomfortable. I, I can see riding in this stock saddle for a long time. And 
All right, so we've been out here for a little bit. I can feel the blood definitely rushing away from my hands. Uh, and I can see riding like this after a while, I can see my hands kind of starting to want to fall asleep, which is, you know, I can definitely put this hand down. This bike has cruise control. So, you know, if, I, if, if you're on the highway and your hands are starting to, to, to go numb, you just, you can put it in cruise control and continue to do that. Uh, pretty standard controls for this bike on the right. We have your cruise control settings um, and your on and off uh, power and kill switch combined. Uh, turn signal and hazards all in one here on the left with auto canceling turn signals. Uh, horn and high and low beam. And so that is, the, that is the extent of the controls here on the bike. You have keyless start, power to, to turn the bike on, ignition to start the bike. So yeah, when I stop the bike here, uh, flat footing it easy, I'll put the seat height, exact seat height down uh, so you guys can have that. So if you're a shorter person, obviously reaching the ground isn't a big deal. You might be concerned about reaching the controls, which are forward controls here on this Indian Springfield Dark Horse. Uh, I, I don't have a problem. It's a little bit of a stretch, but not an uncomfortable stretch uh, to find either the the, uh, the shifter peg or the brake. Uh, so that's not a problem. Uh, if you are shorter than me, I'm five foot six with a 30 inch inseam. I don't know if I mentioned that already, but if you're shorter than me, I mean, it's a little bit of a stretch here, but not a huge stretch. I think that uh, probably Indian has an option, and I'll put that up here if they do, for you to swap out this this uh, just this regular shifter peg for one that has a heel on it too. And maybe that might be easier for you if you're shorter uh, to for downshifting. Oh, we're going faster here. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, 116 of CC engine, I'll put the, the max horsepower and torque settings here for you guys too, or specifications. I mean, this, this is no joke. <laughs> oh, I'm going too fast. I mean, we're talking about uh, this with the Springfield, uh, the kind of the, the lower, uh, and I'll put the starting price here. Oh, actually got the starting price right here, 22.5 for the standard black and then uh, 23 for uh, the other two color options. Uh, which is, you know, the, the starting point for kind of your, your, uh, your begin, not the beginner, but your uh, smaller touring bikes. There we go, there's the arrows bearing off to the left here. So you've got a, uh, I think that's a, a pretty, pretty decent starting price for a motorcycle uh, with, with uh, some pretty decent standard features you know, uh, I don't see an option here for ride mode. Uh, so you don't have any ride modes, but let, let's just take a look here. We'll, we'll go down this list. Uh, we've got 19 inch cross contrast cut front wheel and open front fender, uh, two up rogue seating, remote locking, uh, slammed saddlebags. You do have ride modes, tour standard and sport and uh, rear cylinder active deactivation which is going to help you, uh, your bike cool off a little better when you turn off that rear cylinder abs cruise control standard and uh, tire pressure monitor system uh 758 pounds dry and a 5.5 gallon tank you're going to get pretty good gas mileage out of a touring bike too and i think depending on what mode you're in you're going to save yourself even more if you're in tour mode i'm guessing you're going to get the max uh the max gas mileage standard tour sport here we go guys <laughs> oh that's definitely a <laughs> definitely torquier in sport mode but i think we're going to find ourselves here in some uh some twistier roads so we're really going to be able to find out uh what she's got Turn right here, follow the arrows. Here we're getting into this nice little turn here. Oh yeah. I'll put the lean angle down for this bike, but it has no problem there in that turn. You know, I like to to have been going a little bit faster, but that's that was uh plenty. Plenty of speed there. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh, that is nice. Another little white. Now kind of a sweepy turn. Got the green here. How's it gonna do? <laughs> oh, sport mode is much torquier than standard mode, but it is fun. All right, guys. So my hands really haven't uh, haven't gotten much like number or colder from being in this riding position. I will say that my arms, I think, are feeling a little bit of fatigue from being up here. Uh, say what you will. I know if, if those of you who ride a bike with uh, some real, you know, high hangers or uh, uh, <laughs> are, don't care about me complaining about having my arms arms up here, but uh, but no, this is uh, this is okay. I think I would be okay uh, uh, going some longer distances on this bike and like I said once you're out on the highway and maybe your arms are getting tired uh, because of cruise control you're gonna be able to put uh, put one of your arms down one thing I will note um, after being in some traffic here and stopping and going is uh, the heat here coming from the exhaust which you got coming down both sides they're very minimal I mean it's, it's a warm day uh, you know, I've ridden this bike pretty hard and now we're in some traffic and I'm not feeling a whole lot of, uh, of heat coming from the engine or from the exhaust. So that's something really nice. And I think uh, uh, because of, I don't know if the rear, I can't tell if the rear cylinder deactivation is on, but if it is, it's definitely helping with the, uh, the heat coming from the, the bike and from the engine. So that's something really nice. It's a nice feature that even though you don't have like this big ride command, uh, uh, display like you do on some of the other models uh, especially with the new chief uh, that has that really nice uh, four inch round uh, LED uh, ride command um, you're still getting those features that you would get uh, that you would get on uh, the bikes with the, with a nicer display and still you know I will say for a, a tank mounted gauge I don't have to dip my head all that much. That's something that I, I've, I've kind of uh, been vocal about in past videos. If you've watched any of my past videos, it's having the, the gas gauge or the, the, the gauge here on the tank is kind of, it's just so useless. If you're somebody who wears a full face helmet. Now, if you're somebody who, who's riding with a half helmet or three quarter or maybe a modular that you can pop up, you can see that the, the, the gauge just fine. But for, for safety purposes, I always wear a full face helmet and um, the, the head dip here isn't, a, isn't so much that I really have to look down. You know, on past Harley middle models that I've ridden, uh, having that mount, that gauge mounted on the, on the gas tank has really made you dip your head. In. And that for, to me, you know, I just think, uh, could you definitely be, have safer options than, than that. Here we go again. I gotta watch the speed. I've seen the highway patrol and I've seen the warning given from other riders, so I'm just gonna be uh, cautious. It's with the flow of traffic, I guess. But guys, this is my first time on a bike with some real hangers. Uh, and I, I enjoyed this ride. This isn't probably something that I'm gonna do on, on a bike in the future. I don't even necessarily like the look of the big tall ape hanger uh, handlebars. But at the same time, I can definitely see why people like riding with them. I can see that there's more to it than just a, a aesthetic choice. Uh, so yeah, I, consider me uh, schooled when it comes to uh, these high handlebars. They, people always say, don't knock it until you try it. I've knocked it in the past. I will no longer knock it. All right, but I've coming to the end of this ride. If you guys have any questions about the Springfield Dark Horse, make sure you leave them in the comments. Oh yeah, man, that's just that's so good in the turn. Even with you know, my hands in this position, it was something that I was concerned with getting on the bike. Uh, how I would how I would do once we got out here on the on the open road and and uh, and had to lean into a turn being in this position even though I've been on a cruiser with higher handlebars you know th this is 
not necessarily extreme, but it's getting to the, uh, the extreme. And so I wasn't sure how it would be. But I mean, once you get into it, once you figure it out, it's not bad at all. And actually, it's kind of fun. It's just kind of a whole new experience. And, and it's one of those things where, and I, that I say about my test ride videos, if you haven't ridden one of these bikes, if you haven't ridden a bike with the tall handlebars, you know, any, any other different variety of bike that I might ride on, on my videos, you got to try it out before you say anything about them because before you try it out, you, don't, you just don't know. It's almost like having your hands up higher makes you forget about how, how low your feet might be to the ground. Because, you know, cruiser uh, lean angles are, are not nothing to be to write home about. They're, you're always worried about, at least if I am, you're, I'm always concerned with scraping a peg or scraping a floorboard. Uh, it kind of makes me forget all about that, having my hands up higher here. You know, there, it's definitely not something where I feel like I have less control of the bike with my hands up here. Um, I will say, now that I'm riding into the wind, that I can feel kind of the sail that I have become uh, with the wind. And uh, and how I, I have to grip a little bit harder on the handlebars because, uh, for one, we're going faster and I'm kind of like slingshotting myself forward. You gotta kind of lean forward to really get into it because it's something uh, that, that, it, that is a concern. It's something that's definitely something you have to consider. Maybe not a concern, but something to take into consideration when you're riding with uh, with high handlebars like this is the fact that you, you're, you've you opened your arms up and your, and your chest up to become a sail rather than uh, being any any time when you can lean forward. Maybe if I put my elbows in and lean forward, it's a little bit better. But still, riding against the wind, I can feel it for sure. Still no problem there with these turns. Even uh, shifted, uh, shifted up, getting into that turn, and still really effortless here. I don't know how close I'm getting to scraping, but like I said, having it in my that up or upright riding position uh, has me less concerned about that. I don't know why. Oh, how did I do, guys? Leave it in the comments as well. How did I do riding uh, for the first time with with these these big hanger handlebars? Let me know in the comments how I did, uh, or how, how, how terrible I did as well. <laughs> I, I got thick skin. Go ahead and, and, and let me have it if, if I did terribly. But guys, we'll end the, ri the, the video here before we get back uh, into the venue, which is the International Motorcycle Show Outdoors this year in Sonoma, California. Uh, if you like this video, you found it helpful at all, make sure you hit that thumbs up down there, which is the like button. And if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. Guys, if you're out there riding, please be safe. Be kind to one another. My name is Eric. I'm that one guy. And I am out.